As you can see, I got some lovely chicken. I got this chicken from a place I've never been to before called Chico's Chicken and Pizza. It's one of those little hole in the wall places that I've driven by for years, probably decades, and never stopped. Always meant to, but never did. So today I, I finally decided to try it. Well, actually, a few months ago I wanted to try it. And I checked their website. And I said they're open at 11 o'clock. I went there. They said they weren't open until 1 o'clock. So I was thinking maybe that was like an old um, pre COVID schedule they had or something that I was looking at. But it's got three pieces of chicken, coleslaw, gravy, garlic toast, french fries. And this, when I took this out of the, the box just now, it was still hot. It burnt my fingers. I didn't have to drive far to get it. Which is nice. But still, for it to be that hot, that's good. Now, first things first. I recently did a logging video. And I did a shout out to one of my viewers that I'm afraid I may have uh, mispronounced his name. So Maddox Espinoa, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly this time, okay? I hope that's how it's pronounced, okay? Okay, Maddox, I, I hope I did that right. Bongo Cat, um, I promised Bongo Cat a shout out uh, months ago, and for some reason either I never did it or something happened, but he, uh, he never saw it, so Bongo Cat, big shout out to you, my friend. ASMR is life 39. Big shout out to you, my friend. Uh, I don't mind doing shout outs at all. I enjoy it. So ASMR is life 39. Big shout out to you. I like doing shout outs. Now, I hope I don't mess this up because this person will probably never forgive me if I do.
was one evening, it was during the summer, beautiful night, still daylight. I go in there, and I see Andre in there. He's building himself an ice cream cone. He's got this beautiful camera around his neck. I'd seen him with it before. And I'd been thinking about buying a camera. I'd never owned a camera before. And I had taken pictures with other people's cameras. And I always thought it was so empowering to take a picture. And then you create something, you know. You capture a moment or you create or you compose or however you, you want to look at it. But I always thought it was so cool, so empowering, so, so interesting. So I'd been thinking about buying a camera. You know, I mean, I was spending my money left, right, and center anyway. Why not? So Andre's in there. And I walk up to him and I ask him about his camera. And I told him that, you know, I was thinking of buying one. He goes, yeah. So that's a good idea. He said, I really enjoy mine. I said, what, plan, what kind do you plan to get? And I said, I have no idea. I'm a, I'm a beginner. I know nothing about cameras, but... And I'd like to get something because I want to learn. I said, well, the best advice I can give you. Get something simple, but get something good. If you get a piece of junk, you'll probably regret it. Aren't you, Rush? So I thought, yeah, that's good advice. So he starts explaining to me different things about cameras, things I should look for, you know, you know f-stops and shutter speeds, and to me he was speaking Martian, I didn't understand what he was saying, and in between his strawberry vanilla and chocolate, he kept going on using all this terminology, and so finally I, I said, okay, well thanks very much, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go looking for one this weekend. weekend, Saturday, I decided to go looking for a camera. Now there was quite a few franchises around town, but I noticed there was a, uh, a new camera store opened, not far from where I live on this very busy street. store, you know, I walk in, there's nobody in there but me and the owner, the guy that, that owns it, who's working there, behind the counter, very friendly guy, his name is Wilf, Wilf and I would eventually become very good friends, and at that time he was just starting out, but he would build a real reputation for being the go-to guy for cameras. So I was happy to say I knew him when he was just starting.
chicken compound with the fact that I'm starving turns me into a real animal. some film, put it on automatic, and Wilf has suggested just put it on automatic until you kind of, you know, learn more about it, because you can't go wrong. I shot a speed at 125, you know, that sort of thing. four major chicken, sorry, four major chicken 
Look at Chicken Shrapnel there. Four major chicken franchises in the town I live in. Um, Mary Brown's, Lee's, Popeye's, and uh, KFC. And this, um, this is not bad chicken. It's very good, but it's just different, you know? So it's nice to have something different. It doesn't taste like any of those. Like, I find all four of those that I just mentioned, they taste kind of the same, like this, you know, the same 11 herbs and spices sort of thing. But this is different. Very good. Tastes more like uh, Granny's home style, you know what I mean? And funny enough, we used to have a franchise in town called Granny's. I said earlier, I picked the wrong uh, meal for uh, pictures because I, I was kind of hoping to pick some of these up at some point and show you pictures. Or like, uh, not actually show you pictures, but just you know to demonstrate different things. I started understanding photography more. I took a picture of my friend's cat. He had just a, um, like a gray tab cat sitting on a chair. The cat's name was Fast Eddie. I took a picture of that cat. It turned out really well. I 
a lovely man. I'm not sure if he's still around for years. He was, um, after he, um, got out of the camera store business, he started, um, teaching a lot of photography while he was all along. But he, he devoted more time to that. house and a couch surfing there for a while just on the weekends so me and three other guys rented a house so there was four of us and all four of us had cameras and were all into photography it was a it was a really cool time a lot of fun interesting but you know it's um black and white like my girlfriend's daughter is really into black and white because to her it's a novelty as with with me i kind of grew up with black and white i remember wilf told me that black and white is good a lot of people use it for portraits because there's less distraction in the background you just kind of focus you know all you see is the subject as we're with color there's more distraction you're looking at the background a lot so that made sense you know and black and white is a lot of fun, you know. He sold me a couple of filters so that when I took pictures, the, the clouds would be more enhanced and different things like that. Otherwise, a lot of times with black and white, everything's just black and white, you know. from the, the 60s and 70s. Oh, look at this. Five-day photo finishing. Wow. Five-day, my friends. You can really get your pictures. 
just in five days back then. Like I said, it was uh, it was two weeks, and yeah, that started to change. It's I gotta save this one here. It started to change. It was uh, like I said, two weeks, then a week, then then five days. The real breakthrough with development. off, do some shopping, go have coffee, come back, and your pictures are ready in an hour. Wow, the future has arrived. The first time I did that, it was like mind-blowing. It was like the back of my head was coming off, like, wow, I couldn't believe it, you know. One hour, I got to see my pictures. Whew. The, 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 uh, let me tell you, the future had arrived for sure. Man, I, I think Buck Rogers was my neighbor. Meet George Jetson. <laughs> but no, I'm just having fun, my friends. But you have to understand, back then, going from waiting two weeks to get your pictures to one hour, that was amazing. And I had different choices of finishes. A matte finish or whatever. And they start doing this thing where the, the corners are rounded, you know. See the rounded corners? That was very trendy for a long time. Now, Wilf also got me on to slides. Slides were the high definition pictures of back then. I'll tell you, I've got slides that my parents took from the 60s. If you looked at it today, you'd almost think it was taken yesterday. Because it's very, very crystal clear, you know, it's amazing. So I've got, I've got scads of slides. That's, that's a fraction of what I got. My parents gave me their old slide projector. Back in the 60s, my parents bought a, uh, an Argus 35mm camera. But it wasn't a single lens reflex. In other words, when you looked through the viewfinder, you weren't looking through the lens, you were just looking through the viewfinder. You know, and that's the difference between a single lens reflex. When you look through the viewfinder, you're looking through the lens. I, I think I forgot to mention that earlier. So if you had the lens cap on with my parents' camera, you would know the difference because you're looking through the viewfinder. So they went to Europe one time, they went all over Europe taking pictures with a lens cap on. Well, they did get a lot of good pictures without it, but it was just a shame. So all their stuff was, or they started using slides, which was good because slides, like I said, are very good quality. A lot of professional photographers use them for years for models and all that. Because that medium is really good. Last piece of chicken. show slides that they like to entertain, they invite people over, my mom would make a, a Tate Square or something, and they'd have people over to look at slides, and some people were just bored out of their minds, and other people were like, you know, wide awake, or pretending to be. But I always enjoyed it when they showed slides, I always thought it was kind of exciting. 
I have ears in the red of screens that shine them on the wall. They take down the cuckoo clock and they're they shining on the wall. And uh, it was fine because a lot of times the slides would come out sideways, so everybody's going like this. You know, you're you're turning your head like this. You know. Now the real drawback it was kind of noisy. I think a loud noisy fan in it. The drawback to using that projector was it ruined a lot of the slides because the uh, the light was so bright that it washed a lot of the color out on them, which is very unfortunate. Oh. There's lots of different types of cameras. decided to buy one. Now they were interesting for a number of reasons. You could see your picture right away. Watch it develop before your eyes. Your thing would slide out, and you could see it developing, coming to life. And another thing I saw one time in a photo magazine was this guy would take a toothpick when the picture popped out. He'd just kind of sort of do little lines on it, so it'd come out all kind of weird, you know. And it was interesting. It was more like an art form.
so I just showed you a little while ago. I've got lots more negatives of, you know, mom when she was really young, or my dad, or whoever, pictures of the family before I was born. Take it with that camera. Then the one on top. That's my little Nikon. I use that a lot. But digital photography is amazing. It's, I mean, it's it's so clear and high definition. You know, it, it's it's just wonderful the fact that you can. segment, that's what it was. And this young fella from Los Angeles was taking pictures. And I was looking at them. And I thought, well, the composition didn't look that great, really. And, um, they, they, they looked kind of, um, well, not really high definition. They were something about it I couldn't quite put my finger on. As it turned out, he had discovered film. So to him, film was a novelty. So he bought himself a film camera, taking pictures. So that's what the whole thing was about. Was about a lot of the younger generation discovering film cameras. Kind of like a lot of the young generation discovering vinyl records, you know. He thought it was great. He loved it. And he's out taking pictures like crazy. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, film has, you know, warmer tones and this kind of stuff. And Well, that's nice, but it's still not as sharp. early 80s, early mid 80s, mid 80s, I started losing interest in photography. My love of photography was replaced with a video camera. I went crazy over the video camera. that but that's gonna be another video but then in 2010 I went and I bought a little Canon sharpshooter or power shot pardon me Canon power shot with me on all my trips. It's like a backup camera. I've used it on my cooking video. That little Canon power shot. It's a really nice camera. Like I said, I still have it. I still use it. I should have taken it out and showed it to you here, but it's in one of my packs. So I'll show you a picture of it. I bought that in 2010, just before I went on in the 
Alaska cruise. Because I wanted to get back into taking pictures. Because the whole time I was doing video, my ex wife was taking pictures. And pictures are pretty cool. I like having pictures. She used to do that creative memory scrapbooking all the time. She was really good at it. Definitely get that again. Nothing wrong with that chicken. You know, I haven't had an orange crush in a dog's age. But uh, my mom had her birthday a little while ago. On May 31st, she turned 97, so. some ribs and chicken like wings and ribs and stuff from a local restaurant and I got a cake and there's me and Linda and my sister and my mom and um, I, I knew that um, my sister really liked Orange Crush she always did since she was a little kid and Linda's not a pop drinker but I, I noticed she will drink Orange Crush a little bit and my mom would drink it so I bought some Orange Crush and it actually was quite tasty so I know.